In this video, we're going to be going over the Modified Ashworth Scale. So the Modified Ashworth Scale, or MAS as I'm going to abbreviate it here, is a tool that's used to assess for muscle resistance to passive range of motion about a single joint. In other words, it's used in the assessment of spasticity. So it is the gold standard tool for measuring spasticity in patients with a spinal cord injury. But this tool is not just used with spinal cord injuries, it's used in other conditions such as stroke, cerebral palsy, multiple sclerosis, any condition where there might be a chance that there's an upper motor neuron lesion that could cause spasticity. And understand that there's better reliability when the tool is used to measure spasticity in the upper extremities than the lower extremities. Now, when you're assessing for spasticity, you're going to assess for it in a particular muscle. So we could assess for spasticity in the quads, in the hamstrings, we could do it in the biceps brachii, which is actually what we're going to look at several times in this video to learn the grades that we'll see in a couple of minutes. And in order to assess for spasticity, you're going to begin in a position in which that muscle is maximally shortened. So if we're doing the biceps brachii, the shortened position of that muscle is in a position of elbow flexion right? And then over one second or faster, normally it's a little bit faster in the clinic, we're going to manually stretch that muscle by moving the joint through the opposite movement. So you begin where the biceps are maximally shortened. How would you stretch the biceps? You move it through extension, okay? If you were doing this for the quads, you'd begin in a position of knee extension because that's where the quads are maximally shortened. And then you'd quickly move the knee through flexion because that would stretch the quads, okay? So this rule applies for every single muscle that you're gonna test. And then based on the result of that quick stretch of the muscle, you're gonna give that spasticity a score here on the modified Ashworth scale. Notice that the scale goes between zero and four. Four is the most severe, zero is the least severe, and technically no spasticity at all. You'll also notice that there's two one scores. There's a regular one, which is the least severe of the two, and then there's a one plus. And having that one plus uh, gives the lower scores here a little bit more specificity. So what does a score of zero look like? Well, there's gonna be no resistance at any point in the passive range of motion. So you see here, no increase in muscle tone. To assess for bicep spasticity, we're gonna begin in that position where the biceps are shortened. That's elbow flexion. And then we're gonna provide a quick stretch to that muscle. And to do that, we'd have to move the elbow through extension like you see right here. Now, what do you notice here? Is there any catch and release, anything where there's a noticeable increase in muscle tone as I go throughout that range of motion? No, it very cleanly moves from a position of elbow flexion to elbow extension meaning there's no increase in biceps muscle tone. So if you see something like this, well, there's no spasticity in that joint. And just because somebody has spasticity in one joint doesn't mean that they're gonna have spasticity in all joints. So somebody might very well have quad spasticity, but they won't have hamstring spasticity, okay? So there might be certain muscles that you test that will have a score of zero. So just so you understand that. So now for a score of one. So according to the modified Ashworth scale, a score of one is a slight increase in muscle tone manifested by a catch and release or by minimal resistance at the end of the range of motion when the affected part is moved into flexion or extension. Now this last little clause here, we're talking about the biceps, so we're thinking about elbow extension. This has nothing to do with flexion, but of course if you're looking at the quadriceps, it would be knee flexion, okay? In other words, there will be minimal resistance at the very end of passive range of motion, but beyond that, it'll still be very easy to move to full end range. So when I start moving this, what you'll see is the forearm, when it gets to about right here, which is very close to full end range of extension, there's gonna be a catch, right? There's gonna be an increase in muscle tone. You'll kind of see that movement stop, and then I'll be able to push it a little bit further. So here's what it looks like. You see right there, there's a little catch and then I'm able to push it beyond that to full elbow extension, okay? So if I see something like this, I'm gonna grade that as a one, okay? And again, it's still very easy to move beyond that catch to full range of motion. Now when we get to a one plus, this is very similar. The main difference here is that 
where the catch occurs. So in a one, the catch occurred about right here, very close to end range of motion. For a one plus, it's gonna occur a little bit quicker. So we usually say that it's gonna be minimal resistance at mid range of passive range of motion. Again, it's still very easy to move to end range, okay? So here's what that looks like. Here's a one plus. So notice that it's about the same resistance as a one. However, that catch occurs earlier on in the range of motion, okay? If you look at the definition according to the modified Ashworth scale, it's a slight increase in muscle tone manifested by a catch followed by minimal resistance throughout the remainder, less than half of the range of motion. So if that catch occurred way up here, it would not be a one plus. It's got to occur roughly at mid range or even a little bit beyond mid range. Okay, so that's a one plus. Now a two is gonna be greater resistance. I'm gonna call it moderate resistance at the beginning of the passive range of motion, so before we get to mid range. And it's still fairly easy to move to end range, okay? So by definition, it's a more marked increase in muscle tone through most of the range of motion, but the affected part is still easily moved to end range. So here's what that looks like. So notice that that catch occurs much earlier on, okay? It's occurring before we get to mid-range, okay? But again, you can see there, it's still fairly easy to move it to full extension. So I would grade this as a two. Now for a three, we have a considerable increase in muscle tone and passive movement is difficult. So high resistance at the beginning of passive range of motion and it's difficult to move to end range. Now, that being said, it's still possible to move it to end range. It's just difficult. So what does that look like? We'll take a look here. So you can see that getting it to end range looks fairly difficult. I'm having to use quite a bit of force and it's not just going very quickly, okay? The catch occurs right away and then it's difficult but still possible to move to end range. So that would be a three on the modified Ashworth scale. And then a four is basically just rigidity. Okay, so the affected part is rigid in whatever position it's stuck in. So let's suppose you have somebody that just carries their elbow joint like this, okay? Then you try and move it through passive range of motion to extension and it just does this. Doesn't budge, okay? That would be a four on the modified Ashworth scale. So very high resistance at the beginning of passive range of motion and it's impossible to move to end range. I suppose if you got Eddie Hall out here, strongest man on the planet, he could probably get it to move, but for all reasonable purposes, this joint is not gonna move beyond maybe one or two centimeters, okay? You're certainly not getting this to end range without hurting the patient, okay? So if you see something like this, it's a grade of four on the modified Ashworth scale. Thanks for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, and check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff.